Hi, I'm Gaia, and in this video I want to explain to you how I record my own screaming or harsh vocals. I am a hobby musician and I like to record my own vocals and guitar tracks in my own home studio. And when I started out there was a lot of confusion for me, so I didn't really know where to look and uh, had some conflicting information. So maybe this video will show you how I figured it out and what I use to record what you need to record yourself. I actually love doing things myself and figuring it out myself. And I love sharing the information that I've gathered and how I kind of figured out how I want to record and how I want to work and how I can make things sound well passable or even good. I always find that the stage of actually recording vocals is kind of skimmed over a lot of the times. It's not really explained that well. Uh, most of the time the vocals are already recorded and then mixed so they will explain the mixing stage or they will over explain how to actually do the vocals and how to perform them in the vocal boot but not on the engineer side, the, uh, the side that is going to record those vocals. And because we are hobby musicians and probably just working from home, we are going to need the knowledge how to actually get our vocals or somebody else's vocals on track. So why I am explaining this in this video is that uh, in the beginning when I started recording my own vocals, I knew my vocals kind of sounded good, you know, when you practice in the shower and you get the good sound and when you practice with your band, it kind of sounds good over the PA. So you you think like, ah, let's give it a shot and record it at home. And then you record it and then it sounds super thin. Uh, it doesn't sound good at all. And you're like, what, what happened here? I'm going to explain to you why this happens and how we can fix that. I'm going to go over a few things in this video. Uh, step one is I'm going to look at what you need in order to record your own vocals. So the, the stuff you actually need to have in your home or in your little studio. I'm going to talk you in through how to set up for recording. So how to get everything uh, correctly set up and to, to actually start recording those vocals. I'm going to show you a bit how I actually record the vocals into uh, a backing track. So over some instrumentals. And I'm going to quickly show you how to make those vocals sound a bit better in the mix. I'm not going to do it very in depth, but at least I'm going to show you how you get from that thin sounding nothing to a kind of more fuller sound. So let's go over what we actually need in order to start recording our own vocals. The first thing we are going to need is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. In my case, I like to use Logic Pro, which is like the paid variant of GarageBand, which comes with a Mac. So if you have a Mac and you don't have Logic Pro, you can use GarageBand for this purpose perfectly. Another DAW I see a lot of people use is Reaper. It's free as long as you like, as I understand it. And it's a great alternative if you're, for instance, using Windows and you don't want to pay a lot of money for uh, a lot of like the big names in the DAW industry. We're going to use the DAW to actually record our vocals and lay them on top of our instrumentals or our music. The DAW allows us to actually record our vocals and put them on top of the music and kind of rearrange it, mix it, adjust the volume levels and apply effects to your vocals. The next thing you're going to need is a microphone. In my case, I'm using an Shure SM7B, which is on a mic stand, but you can also use uh, the SM58, for instance. I used these for my first recordings and they served perfectly. I mean, the, the quality, yeah, there's a difference, but um, when you start out, this will do fine. Don't worry about it too much. The next thing we are going to need is an audio interface, which connects through USB to your computer. We can connect our microphone through an XLR cable through the interface, and that interface will capture the sound that is coming from the microphone. The interface will then send that sound digitally to your computer, which can then record that sound. 
An interface is also good because most of the time it has some gain control so you can bump up the volume of the of the input of your of your microphone. It's not really the volume that you're controlling, it's the gain, so it, it pushes the volume up. But a lot of uh, interfaces have a really good like gain control on them. Another optional thing you can get uh, next to the audio interface is an amplifier, a preamp, in the form of a cloud lifter or a fat hat that will take your microphone signal and boost it up a couple of decibels. A lot of USB interfaces have gain controls but if you use that gain control, it introduces a lot of noise. A cloud lifter and a fat hat will, um, will not introduce as much noise as a lot of USB interfaces would do. I am using a Scarlett 4i4, uh, the fourth gen, which doesn't really need this kind of uh, preamp, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of interfaces that kind of need it in order to power microphones, such as my SM7B. Another thing you're going to want to use is a set of headphones. Uh, we use this to listen to the backing track while we are recording. Um, so that if you're recording and you're listening to the music over speakers, those that sound will bleed into your recording and we don't want that. So we just want the recording going to our ears and then sing inside of this so that the audio that gets recorded in your DAW is just basically only your voice. Some optional stuff I recommend is using a mic stand. This will ensure that your mic is always in the same position while you're uh, screaming or uh, singing into it. It makes a lot. It makes it a lot easier to uh, get the same kind of recording sound each take you will record. Another thing I can recommend getting is a pop filter to actually remove the plosives from you're screaming and singing, especially with screaming, you're, you're getting out a lot of plosive air, so that will block it and it will not end up in your recordings. You just don't want that. And also a nice thing to have is a room that doesn't echo as much. So if you're in your room that you are planning to record and you clap and you hear kind of like a reverb -y, echo -y thing, you kind of need to put more stuff in your room, essentially. So hang stuff up on your walls, uh, put, put in more closets, put uh, fabrics along those flat surfaces that kind of can bounce off the sound and that will immediately improve the recording. So less room sound will seep into your uh, vocal recordings. So let's get ready for recording. The first thing you want to do is position your mic in a nice position that you can scream in it. So I'm going to raise this mic actually. Uh, I like to kind of put it in front of my face and then I will scream directly into the cone. So there's a, um, there's the microphone capsule is located in here and it's pointing to my face. So this way I know that uh, the sound goes directly in here. This is a directional mic, so you have to scream into this direction. So get it in a nice position. I will adjust the pop filter a bit. Yeah, th so this looks nice. Uh, the next thing we are going to do is look at the incoming signal. You can see that I already have uh, focus right open here. So this uh, program allows me to see the metering um, of the actual signal coming in into the audio interface. And it's hitting about minus 12 dB right now, which is great for recording. You have a bit of headroom left um, to, to play with, uh, to add effects to. It's not clipping. So clipping means is that it goes over uh, a zero and then uh, the signal is being cut, which actually just means that you're distorting your, uh, your signal. Um, yeah, we don't want that. We want to uh, record as clean as possible. Also make sure that all the um, like fancy stuff that you can add to your signal, like for instance, for me, I can add some air mode stuff with my focus right. Um, make sure that is disabled as well. The next thing we're going to do is to see um, 
if we can match our screaming volume to also be minus 12 dB. This is going to be really weird because my, my speaking voice will be uh, a lot softer, a lot less loud than my screaming voice. So I have to take the gain way down and uh, test out how my screams are landing. So for instance, I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna be loud. I'm gonna uh, uh, adjust the, the volume a bit in, uh, in editing, but um, I'm going to, just going to show you what, what it sounds like if the, the signal clips. Yeah! So obviously the, the signal you saw it on the meter goes up way above zero and it's in red and it's going to clip and it's not going to sound good. So what we're going to do is scream again and then take down the gain. I'm gonna do that, that with, uh, with this knob here. So I'm gonna turn it down and my voice should also turn down while I'll do this. Yeah! So th that sounds like a reasonable level. I, I, I'm shouting a bit into the mic and uh, to, to convey my message. Yeah! I'm gonna take it down just a bit. Yeah! Yeah, that's, that sounds good. Next, we're going to move over to our DAW. We're going to create a new audio track. We will arm this audio track, which means that um, the sound coming in uh, will be uh, will be recorded. I'm actually gonna turn off the input monitoring because that will <laughs> that will save ourselves. You could put on this input monitoring if you want your own voice in your uh, headphones while you're recording, which is nice to have. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to turn it off because that audio will also seep into uh, our recordings. Next, I'm going to select the correct uh, audio channel to record. Um, so I'm putting it in mono and selecting input one, which is uh, the, the input that my mic goes into. So it's just a mono signal, of course. Um, so we are ready to record. Um, if we arm this track, we can actually start to record some tunes. So let's do that. I have a little instrumental track here of a track I uh, worked on earlier and I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm gonna do some improvised screams on top of them and uh, you can see how that works. I'm gonna put on my headphones. The music that's coming from my computer will go through these headphones and then I'm going to scream into this mic and record the actual, yeah, the track here. I think uh, that sounds good. <laughs> so let's take a look at what I just recorded. Um, don't expect it to sound good. Um, probably very thin and, and not a lot of volume, but we, we will work on that. Yeah, pretty thin, right? 
not much volume, especially this part. Yeah, so especially the second part didn't have a lot of volume behind it. So what can we do to fix that? Uh, there's a couple of things that we can do. Uh, one of the first things that happens in most of uh, vocal like tracks um, is that we will bump the volume or uh, we're going to use a compressor for that. So what does a compressor do? A compressor takes loud signals and turns them the volume down and it takes uh, like softer signals or not as loud and makes them louder. So it kind of even out, evens out the plane. Um, I'm I can show you this that how, how does this how does this work? You can see like okay. So there you can see it's clipping. This is probably yeah. already too much, right? And um, I'm not really sure how to do all this finicky stuff, but that's one thing they use to bump up the volume and, and get it to sound good. But the thing I always find is most lacking is uh, a reverb. And uh, what, what you can do, for instance, is, is just load a reverb patch. And if you, if you just listen to the screams on its own. So did you hear that trail off? It kind of sounds like you're in a room. Um, Let's just do a hall, like a, uh, a, a large hall, like a, a concert hall, for instance. Um, it will sound like it's a big room, a very big room. Immediately sounds like you're in a cave or in a in a hall and there's a lot more feedback coming from your from your voice so i'm gonna show you the 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 the, the difference ah. this is with and now without ah. yeah. do you hear that you can hear the kind of There's added reflection in the background, which will make it uh, actually sound a lot better. Um, I'm gonna stop here. So uh, it, if we just now look, listen to it. Bit of compressor and reverb and it immediately sounds a lot better. Uh, that's the basics of how this works. I'm not gonna go much deeper into it, but this is how I first recorded my vocals. A cool thing about uh, uh, Logic is that they have these presets. They are uh, behind this button in the library. And then you can pick voice and then Let's do edge voice. I don't know what this does, but let's just solo it out and it puts in, puts up all the effects that you might need in order for this to sound good. So let's check it out. Not that much different, right? Let's try fast voice. <laughs> A lot of effects. Maybe a bit too much. 
Compressed vocals. Yeah. Slammed vocals. Let's see what that is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, we can. Let's let's uh, let's go with fast vocals. It's it sounded pretty cool. <laughs> So that probably uh, has, has to do a lot with these effects pedals that are placed on top of it. Uh, so, yeah. Ah. Actually, without the pedals, it sounds really good. It already evens out the plane and uh, it makes it uh, makes it good. Let's see how it sounds in the mix. If you want, we can bump the volume. No, it's not bad, right? Uh, another trick uh, you can do is to set up a vocal bus, uh, which will then have all the, the, the effects that you might need. Um, so it has all the, the effects that, that, are, that will make the incoming signal sound better. Uh, I will turn off all the effects of the, uh, of the actual uh, vocal line. So this right now is, is super flat. Um, when, when you go here to output, you go to your vocal bus. And then here you can, uh, it will send all this signal through this channel, which is going to have all these effects, which is going to help you uh, record a lot faster. So if you, for instance, have a, a, a new track, which is <laughs> a new track, which was uh, <laughs> monitoring, and you say, okay, let's have output one go through a uh, vocal bus. Then immediately this, this audio will be sent through this channel, so it will have all the same kind of effects on them. So that's nice. Uh, let's test it with the first track. I kind of adjusted the, um, the reverb and stuff for, the, for how I like it to sound and let me for instance let's double up the the track here um well yeah i don't know let's let's try it Whoa. yeah yeah Whoops, I forgot to uh, adjust the gain staging. So th this is uh, actually really good. You can see right now that uh, I made a mistake and I didn't turn the gain all the way down again. And now it, it, it kind of fucked up this, uh, th th this focal line, but that's okay. Let's see how it sounds. I'm gonna turn it down though, because I know it will sound not so good. You hear it was sent through the vocal bus with the same effect. So essentially that's just what happens there. It's good when you're tracking multiple tracks of vocals and you are singing through a track and you want to take some extra takes. There might be some screams that you don't like. Just re do retakes and then all the effects are applied to it. You can also um, uh, monitor that on your Headphone, so you immediately hear all those effects applied. I really don't, yeah, I, I don't work that way. I just scream in raw and then I apply the effects later or when I'm listening back to them, I listen back to those recordings. I hope this video has helped. Um, I'm going to try and 
make some more of these videos to help you uh, get to recording in your home studio. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put on some, some clips around arranging music or making music, making a song, mastering, mixing. I'll, I mean, I'm not super good at this stuff, but at least I know my way around the tools and I hope I can inspire you to also go and record your vocals yourself at home. Uh, so that you can release a song with your band, for instance. That will be cool. I might see you in the next video. And uh, for now, I, I was Gaia. You could check out my music. You can also check out the, the actual song that I, I tracked over in this video, which is called Infestation. It's on my YouTube channel. You can find it. It might also be in a card at the end of this video. But for now, I'll see you again next time and uh, cheers.